This is Techmodo, a Gizmodo series where we take a dive into some of the most recent tech news with some expert guests. This week, mathematician Hannah Fry talks to me about how to study a city in a computer program. Humans are creatures of habit, a phenomenon that is so reliable that researchers are able to model our movements, actions, and decisions using computers. For what, you might ask? Well, lots of things. Just ask Hannah Fry, who is a mathematician from the University College London. By working with physicists, computer programmers, and geographers, Hannah and her colleagues are able to build digital networks of human behavior in order to study the effects of things like terror attacks, dating, and as we know all too well, pandemics. I got to talk to Hannah all about her research in modeling the ins and outs of human behavior using mathematics and computers, and it's just about as cool as you would expect. So you are someone who uses digital models to study urban spaces. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's correct? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So what are you using those models to actually study? So it's, to be honest, I think if you looked at like the history of things that I've looked at, it, it's it's like the most it's it's like the the the, the, the most mad shopping list. Okay. Of like cool. <laughs> things. So I've done um, lots of uh, work on terrorism. Okay. Um, I've done <laughs> work on uh, serial killers. Mm. Um, there's some work in there on pandemics. Okay. Um, also on badgers biting uh, oh, cattle. All I mean, right. You know, it's it's a collection. A lot of light fluff. Stuff. A lot of light yeah. stuff. But, but generally speaking, all of them have these patterns that move around in space and time, generally driven by humans or badgers. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, but you know, mathematically speaking, yeah. humans and badgers are almost indistinguishable from one another. Okay. It really is about, it's, it's not about trying to predict what one person will do. It's about looking at the patterns that we create without even necessarily knowing that we're doing so. Mm. And using these very well-worn mathematical techniques to try and understand the directions that things are going to move in. How do you then, when you go to, to model a problem, let's say we're modeling like the pandemic, for mm -hmm. example, the COVID-19 pandemic, mm -hmm. how do you go about building a model that can capture kind of all the nuances of human behavior? Well, I mean, there's a couple of different schools of thought here. And on the one hand, I think that you have to say that you can't, mm -hmm. right? There's no way yeah. that you will ever be able to get all of it. And so as a result, you know, you have to be, um, I think, have intellectual humility over the things that you're creating. Because these things, these models that you're building, they're not crystal balls. Mm -hmm. They don't like allow you to peer into the future. But what they do do is give you the best uh, the best forecast that you can possibly have, right? They are much better than having nothing, sure. but you have to be careful about thinking that they are telling you the absolute truth sure. of what's to come. But I think that there's different levels really, you know, like there, there's, there's some model with the pandemic where you don't even really think necessarily about individual people. You sort of think of like, of, of people as sort of kind of um, great masses that are sort of transitioning from being infected um, to, to infecting others and then being susceptible. Um, and then there's other much more detailed models where you really start to take into account the type of jobs that people have, the, how far they move around, mm. all of those different kind of things. And for that, you need a lot, a lot, a lot of data. Yeah. With that, what is the most complex model you've built and what were you studying with it? Oh, so I think that actually the, the most complex one that I've been involved in was was um, was COVID-19. Okay. Um, Why is that? So, I mean, because the, just the vastness of the data and the importance mm. of it too, right. but um, that, that urgency to uh, work out what the next right thing to do was, you know, in that moment in time, was, it was just um, incredibly pressing. I mean, I have to say that, that my colleagues, the epidemiologists, I, basically, I think they didn't sleep for two yeah, years. It was probably. extraordinary. Sure. Um, but you know, lots of them. There, there's like there's varying levels of complexity. I think um, some of the uh, some of the models um, <laughs> that I built that look around. Um, the patterns that are created with terror events. Mm. So how, uh, and particularly, there was some work that I did that looked at um, what happened in the troubles in Northern Ireland. Okay. So looking at how, because it's sort of, they follow this pattern that's a little bit like earthquake. Mm. So an earthquake happens, and then you get these subsequent aftershocks, and, then, and you actually see a really similar signature when you look at um, incidents uh, in, in sort of um, fractious, uh, oh, settings, right? Okay. So you have kind of one big event, one spark as mm -hmm. it were, and then these subsequent um, events that happen. And I don't think that you can use that to make predictions mm -hmm. or 
um, to sort of change the environment. But I do think that what it does retrospectively is it allows you to understand the different phases that a, a, a potential conflict um, has gone through. Wow, that is amazing work. Thank you. Cool, Hannah, thank you for joining of us. Of course. Cool. Thanks so much. It would appear that there's lots to study using computer models and lots of outcomes to learn. While a computer model might not look as flashy as a computer game, these models are in essence the same thing. With all that said, not every human action can be modeled realistically. We make mistakes, we go against the grain, and we can be irrational. But the fact that a computer can't necessarily account for those things is kind of beautiful. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out other Gizmodo videos here on YouTube.